Do you understand the difference between a fertilizer that has an NPK of 111 and 555? And do you know which one you should be using? Do you know the difference between the NPK value and the NPK ratio? That's important to know if you're buying fertilizer. What if someone online gives the suggestion that a certain plant should be fertilized with 1 8 teaspoon fertilizer per gallon? Would you consider that a valid recommendation and would you follow it? By the way, it makes no sense whatsoever. If you're not really sure about any of these items, it's a really good idea to watch this whole video. I see so many comments online about MPK and fertilizer that really don't make a lot of sense. And they tell me that the person making them really doesn't understand what they're talking about. And yet they're usually making recommendations for other people to follow. Now I've broken this video down into four parts. We'll have a look at that difference between the 111 and the 555. I hope you understand what the MPK ratio is and compare that to the MPK value. We'll have a look at some common recommendations online that really make no sense whatsoever. And then finally, I'll explain what MPK really means. If you use fertilizer or you're interested in buying fertilizer, you'll find this video very valuable. So what's the difference between an MPK of 111 and 555? In order to help you understand this, I've simplified the subject matter. We're going to talk about beer instead of fertilizer. Over here, we have some American beer. Now, it's only 3% alcohol, but we also have some Canadian beer, and that's 6% alcohol. Now, let's say that you can drink one bottle of beer at 6%, and you'd just be a that limit where you're still able to drive legally. How many of these bottles could you drink before you reach that level? That's quite obvious and I know all of you got the answer. You can drink two of these bottles for every one of these and get the same amount of alcohol. Well now let's switch over to fertilizers. So over here I have a box of fertilizer that's a 111 and over here I have a box of fertilizer that's a 555. How do these two compare? Well, it's really quite simple. This box here contains five times as many nutrients as this box over here. If you're fertilizing your garden, you can use one of these boxes or five of these boxes. So the NPK number tells you how much fertilizer is in there. And whether you use a 111 or 555 doesn't really matter provided you use the right amount. The smaller the numbers, the more you have to use. So what's the difference between the MPK value and the MPK ratio? They're not the same thing. Let's take this example here. It's a box of fertilizer that's a 624. That number is on the box and that's the MPK value. That tells you how much fertilizer is in the box. So what is the ratio? Well, to get the ratio, we have to reduce this number so that one of the nutrients is a one. That's just how mathematics work. That's the best way to do ratios. So this box here has an MPK ratio of three, one, two. By representing the fertilizer as a ratio, we know how much nitrogen we have relative to phosphorus. We have three times as much nitrogen as the phosphorus. And we have two times as much potassium as the phosphorus. When we're feeding plants, the ratio is actually more important. If I get the ratio right, I can use a wide range of different formulations and they will still give me the right relative amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now, what is the best ratio for plants? I've looked at a lot of plants, both growing them and chemical analysis of the tissue. That shows you how many nutrients are actually in the plant. And as a general value, the ratio of 312 is about right. Sometimes it's a 313, but 312 will work for most plants. It will provide those nutrients in the right ratio. Now it is important to understand that if we're fertilizing the ground, that already has nutrients in it. And so we don't use a ratio of 312 for that. What we have to do is figure out what's already in the soil, and then we simply add the nutrients that are missing. 
Containers are a little different. Because we water them so much, we can assume that a container has no fertilizer in it. And we have to add the fertilizer in the right ratio. So for containers and potted plants indoors, the ratio 3-1-2 works very well. And that applies to most plants. Now, if you go out to buy this fertilizer, a 3-1-2, you probably won't find it. But you may find a 624 or a 936 or a 1248. Any fertilizer with any of these numbers has the same ratio. Three parts nitrogen, one part phosphorus, and two parts potassium. So all of these fertilizers will work. The difference is that the higher the numbers, the less fertilizer we actually apply, the less fertilizer we put into that gallon of water. But the ratio is the same in all of these. Now let's have a look at some recommendations I see online. For your outside garden, one of them goes something like this. Spread one pound of a 10-10-10 fertilizer on your garden. Is that good advice? You might think it is, but to be honest, tells you nothing. There's an important piece of information missing from this. Let me demonstrate. Over here, I have a raised bed. It's a four by four bed. And over here, I have a larger one. It's a four by eight bed. Now let's use this recommendation for these two gardens. I'm supposed to apply one pound of a 10-10-10, but this garden is half the size of this one. You see the problem? That recommendation doesn't tell me how much of the fertilizer to actually apply. So we need three pieces of information. We need the MPK. That tells us how much fertilizer is in the bag. We need a quantity to apply. That was the one pound recommendation. But we also need to know the area that we cover. Right? We use different amounts on large beds compared to small beds. You need all three pieces of information, and most of the time when I see fertilizer recommendations, one of those is missing, which means the information is useless. Let's look at an example for containers. Use one eighth teaspoon of fertilizer per gallon, and use that to water your plants. And actually, I see this one a lot. Again, this one doesn't make any sense, because let's say my fertilizer is a one one one, but somebody else has a 10, 10, 10. Why would we both use 1 8 teaspoon per gallon? That makes no sense whatsoever. Again, you need three pieces of information. You need the MPK, you need the amount that you're adding, the 1 8 teaspoon, and you need the volume of water that you're putting it in. And this is for making up a fertilizer solution that you're then going to water your plants in containers. You need three pieces of information. Without them, the advice is of no value at all. What does MPK really mean? Now, this last one is going to become a little more technical, but I'm going to keep it fairly simple, and I'm sure you'll understand it. It's really important to understand this one if you're going to try to calculate how much fertilizer to apply in your garden. So most gardening sources will tell you that the MPK is the percent nitrogen the percent phosphorus, and the percent potassium. That's wrong. I think garden writers use that just because it's really simple to explain. And so they tell you the wrong information. So what does it actually mean? Well, the N is the percent nitrogen. That part was correct. The P is actually the percent P2O5. And the K is the percent K2O. Now, what is P2O5. A chemist would call this phosphorus pentoxide. Now, a lot of gardeners call it phosphate, which is actually incorrect, but at least it distinguishes the phosphate from the phosphorus, right? P by itself is phosphorus, and when you add some oxygen to it, you do get a phosphate. K2O is potassium oxide. It's better known as potash. And that's the term that most gardeners use. Now, why did these things suddenly become involved in the NPK? Well, it's a historical thing. It has to do with the way these were measured many years ago, and we continue the tradition. So when we report an NPK, it's the percent nitrogen, the percent P2O5, and the percent K2O. It's not the percent N, 
the percent P and percent K. So why do you care? Well, it makes a big difference when you're trying to figure out how much fertilizer to add to soil. Because the important ingredient is the P and the K. We don't really care about the oxides. Oxides, are, that's just oxygen. And there's lots of oxygen in the soil. We don't have to add that part. But when we're weighing out this fertilizer, we have to figure out how much P and K I'm actually adding to the soil. It turns out that the percent nitrogen is the percent nitric. That one's simple. Percent P205 is actually 0.4 P, the phosphorus. Percent K2O is actually 0.8 K. So what this means is that an NPK of 10, 10, 10 is actually 10% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, and 8% potassium. For most gardeners, this isn't a critical thing for you to memorize. But when you go to calculate how much fertilizer to use, it is important. So I hope that's clarified some of the MPK information. If you're wondering which MPK you need for your plants, get a ratio of 3-1-2. That'll be pretty close to what your plants need. If you're looking for fertilizer for the garden, you have to know what's missing in that soil. If you don't know that, nobody's going to be able to tell you which fertilizer to use. Now, if you don't want to get your soil tested and figure that out, then what I recommend to either use a balanced fertilizer, a 10-10-10, and really you're just guessing, but you're throwing some fertilizer on there, it might be useful. Or what's even better is skip the fertilizer and just use compost. Compost tends to provide nutrients in the quantities that plants need, and it's providing a small amount over time. If you're following suggestions online, make sure those suggestions are complete. You need three pieces of information to figure out how much fertilizer to use. I have a number of other videos about soil and fertilizer, and I'll put a link to some of those in the top right-hand corner. I hope all your stuff grows really well this summer.